In today's video, I want to show you how you can use Space Controller creatively. Now, this is actually going to be more of an Ableton Live tip than it is a special audio tip, even though everything that we do today can be used for special audio production as well. Now, if you have never heard about Space Controller, Space Controller is essentially a very simple application that resides on your phone, can be on an iPhone or an Android phone, and it allows you to position sound in three-dimensional space. And the way this works is that you point towards the position of where you want that sound to come from, and the application would then communicate with the digital audio workstation and the audio workstation would set that position accordingly. Now, the way this application communicates is through OSC messaging, and that means that we can simply use those OSC messages creatively. And this is what we're going to do today. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this is very creative. And uh, if you are an Ableton user, you might want to kind of watch that because that's a very interesting way of controlling things in Ableton Live. But first of all, hello everybody, in case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. An invite link is in the description below. And don't forget to press the like button because YouTube wants us to do that. And with that being said, let's get into some Ableton Live controlling with space controller thingy. The way I'm going to approach this video today is by starting out with a very simple Ableton project that contains essentially of two tracks. In one track, I have an instance of Dune, and uh, this instance of Dune is just opened with the default preset, which I think is a really nice one, actually. So I, I, I always like to use that preset whenever I have to demonstrate something, because it's like a one-finger preset, you just push a button and it plays. Uh, it's beautiful. And on the second track, I have an instance of Beatmaker Eden from UGEM, uh, which I just popped on in order to get a little bit of a beat going. I'm not a bit, big beat maker, so I can use a help here and there. And the, the Beatmaker uh, series from UGEM is actually pretty nice for that purpose. So let's just have a listen on how these two things sound together. So nothing particularly fascinating, but it's enough for us to kind of get things going. So what I would like to do is I would like to control both tracks with the space controller application with my phone. So essentially by kind of moving my phone around, kind of controlling different parameters in these two different tracks. And uh, for that purpose, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the settings of our space controller application are actually set correctly. So let's just have a look at our space controller application on our iPhone or Android or whatever you're using. For this tip to work, we need the Space Controller OSC version. That is the version that communicates with the digital audio workstation via OSC messages. So if you're downloading Space Controller, be sure that you get the OSC version. Unfortunately, it costs 150 bucks, so be aware of that. Uh, now, as soon as we have it downloaded to our phone, let's open it up. And uh, once we open it up, it starts to give me information about my position or the position of the phone, uh, the azimuth and elevation angles. And if I push the big button, it turns blue and it also communicates the distance if I'm swiping up and down. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that information and we're going to route that into Ableton to use it creatively within our tracks. Now, uh, we just need to make sure that the settings are set correctly. So let's go into the settings by pressing on the cogwheel on the upper right corner. And uh, there are a couple of things we need to make sure. First of all, we need to make sure that the host is set to spot revolution. Now it would work for the other two as well, for Nuendo 11 and Nuendo 12. Uh, but uh, if, you're, if you're using those, the um, parameters are somewhat uh, changed, are somewhat recalculated to work with Noendo. And the most natural way of interacting with uh, Space Controller is found if we choose the spot revolution setting. So let's just choose that. Make sure that distance is enabled if you want to communicate the distance. Also make sure that linear is enabled uh, because that's sort of the natural way of communicating the, uh, the distance. The maximum distance uh, is set to one. If you start, if you open that up for the first time, it's set to 100. Change that to one because that is the number that uh, the uh, digital audio workstation sort of expects. And in terms of coordinates, we are going to uh, choose the azimuth elevation and distance coordinates because that, once again, is the most natural way of uh, interacting with it. It essentially means the azimuth is, is sort of, you can think of it as left, right, and, and uh, elevation up, down. And the distance uh, is essentially the swiping on the button. If we would choose X, Y, Z, it, it would still work, but, but it, it's not as natural because it kind of uh, recalculates everything 
everything in order to get the position of the sound in three-dimensional space. So it kind of intermingles the distance with elevation and azimuth. So, so choose azimuth, elevation, and distance. Uh, make sure that you disable stable zero elevation. That essentially means that uh, it is not stabilizing. Uh, that will allow us to have fine control over the elevation angles. And uh, then the final thing that you need to make sure is that the computer IP is set to the IP where you're running Ableton. Um, in my case, that is uh, 192.168.1.20. In your case, obviously, that would be different. And then we need to set a port. It uh, doesn't really matter what port. If you, uh, the standard port, I think, with SPAT evolution would be 9,000. At one point, I set it to 7,000. Just uh, set a port uh, and remem remember what port you actually set. And that's really everything we need to do at the uh, space controller application. And uh, that means that we can now go into Ableton and set everything up to receive those messages. Now, in order to receive the messages within Ableton, we need a plugin or something that will allow us to read OSC messages through the network. And Ableton comes with a Max for Life device by default that is able to do that. However, I found that to be particularly uh, buggy and I never really got it to work. So what I'm going to use instead, I'm going to use a publicly available Max for Life device that has been developed by an Ableton user. I'm going to post a link in the description below. And this uh, will essentially allow us to just read these messages. And the nice thing about this Max for Life device is that it is perfect for our, for our purpose. It does exactly what we need it to do and not more, which is always a nice thing. So let's first take our beat track and let's do some things with it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, an auto filter. And it's really just for demonstration purposes because I think that kind of demonstrates best what we, what we can do with the space controller here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an auto filter to the, to the uh, beat maker track. And uh, let me just disable that. And essentially what we can do here is obviously we can change the filter frequency and, and the resonance. And what I would like to do is I would like to control those parameters with the space controller. So that if I move the phone from right to left, it changes the frequency. And if I move it up and down, it changes the resonance. So uh, in order to achieve that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this uh, Max for Life device that can read our uh, OSC messages and, uh, and then essentially map the uh, corresponding OSC messages to the uh, parameters in the auto filter. So let's add that OSC in device. Um, get it from wherever you have downloaded it to. So in my particular case, I have it in a folder called Packs uh, in my user library. And here we have the OSC input device. And let's just drop that on here. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to set. And if you want to know exactly how that works, I invite you to also watch my video on how to use Space Controller and Ableton in order to control three-dimensional sound with Envelope for Life. I'm going to post the link in the description below. Back there, I explained a little on essentially how it exactly works. But the, the main idea is that uh, we need to set the uh, communication messages that are coming through OSC. And we also need to make sure that they are mapped correctly. That's really everything that we need to do. A couple of things that we need to set. First of all, uh, we need to set the port. That is the port that we set in the uh, space controller application. Uh, in my case, it was 7000. And then we need to set the path. And the path uh, has always the same um, syntax. So it starts out with ADM then with object OBG, then comes the object number, which corresponds to the link number in the uh, space control application. So let's start out with one. So this would be object one. And then essentially how we want to communicate, we chose AED, azimuth elevation distance, so it would come AED. If you are choosing XYZ coordinate, you would have to put in XYZ in there. And uh, then we need to do the same thing three times because we are receiving three parameters. We are receiving the azimuth, the elevation, and the distance. So let's do that the second time. ADM slash object slash one slash uh, AED. And a third one, um, ADM slash object slash one slash AED. Uh, the, uh, the way this works is that the messages are sent as a message bundle, so we also need to tell the um, device uh, which of the arguments are actually ele azimuth elevation and distance, and this is done here through the argument number. Uh, argument number one would be the azimuth, argument number two is the uh, elevation, argument number three is the distance. That's essentially the order in which these three, me these, these three parameters are forwarded through the OSC messaging system. Then we need to set the minimum and maximum values. Now, 
now uh, I'm going to start out by the default values. Now the azimuth is measured from in, in degrees from minus 180 to plus 180. So we need to put in here minus 180 and uh, the maximum value is 180 plus. Uh, the elevation goes from minus 90 to plus 90. So let's put in minus 90 uh, and to plus 90. And uh, then uh, the uh, distance is measured from uh, 0 to 1. So that's essentially the number that we put into the settings of the space control application. So we set the maximum distance to be 1, and that's essentially what we're getting here. And there's, there's one more thing that we need to do, and I already explained it in my previous video where I used space controller with envelope for life, and that is that the azimuth is communicated in uh, negatively. So, so we need also need to change, we need to invert it, otherwise it's not as natural. So essentially if we move right, we also want to move the the, uh, the parameters to move right and, and not the other way around. So in order to do that, we just need to turn that around. And that essentially means the minimum is 100% and the maximum is 0%. That essentially just inverts the, the parameter. And the final thing that we need to do is we need to map those. And the way we're going to map them is uh, let's map first the uh, is azimuth and elevation and let's map that to the filter frequency and the filter resonance. So let's say the azimuth, which is essentially the uh, swiping left, right, let's map that to the uh, to the filter frequency and the uh, elevation. Let's map that to the resonance, and that essentially means that if I now take the um, space controller application and I push the button, which essentially makes that blue, I'm now essentially, and I probably need to center my phone first. You always need to center that first, so I'm going to push the set front button here to make sure that that works, and uh, that would now essentially communicate the so, so if I'm if I'm moving my phone up down, it it kind of the resonance goes down. If I'm moving it up, it goes up. Uh, if I'm moving to the left, it goes left. If I'm moving to the right, it goes right. Now we already see that sort of the scaling is a little off uh, because we are communicating the azimuth angle from minus 180 to plus 180. I essentially would have to turn around completely in order to make that work, and that obviously is not particularly functional. And uh, there's an easy remedy for that. We just can tell our little uh, OSC input device that we don't want to receive everything from minus 180 to plus 180. Let's just say we want to receive from, but what's a good angle? Uh, let's say from minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees, minus 90 to 90. Um, and... Uh, that would then essentially make sure that I don't have to move around completely. So now it's much more natural. Um, and you can play around with those values, whatever feels natural to you. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the resonance. Obviously, I don't really want that. That's kind of a very unnatural thing to do, kind of to move to point down. So let's let's say we are not going to go from minus 90 to 90. We're going to go from 0 to 90. Um, and you can you can change that to to whatever is feels natural for you. But I think that that is that is fine. So if I'm if I'm having it uh, horizontally, it's now at zero, um, and if I'm going up, it kind of the resonance comes up, and uh, and that essentially makes that. So if I'm now playing the um, the beat, so let me just play that here. So essentially, I can by swiping my phone. control the auto filter on that track. Now, by that time, you already get this sort of the idea of what we're doing. So we now can just map things around the way we want to. Now we have one additional parameter, that is the distance. So let's do some something fun with it. Uh, let's let's map that to the volume. So we can we can essentially we can map that to anything really. So let's 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 map that to the track volume. Obviously, it needs to be some sort of it does need to make sense uh, for you to kind of uh, combine those parameters because you need to essentially control that with essentially one hand and and, and the thumb. So if if the three parameters don't naturally make sense to you, <laughs> you might have issues. Just play around with it and and see what makes sense to you. I'm going to just kind of map that to the volume. So let's map that to the track volume here. Um, now the, the 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 thing that I'm I, I now have is that the volume because the volume goes from minus uh, infinity to essentially six dB. 
uh, this is this is too much. I, I don't. First of all, I don't want to kind of go down completely, uh, and I also don't really want to go much above zero, uh, if at all. Now, the easiest way to achieve that, so that we get the parameters in a way that makes sense, is to just tell the OSC plugin that receives those OSC messages to expect a, a larger range of those values. That means that it would never go down to min minus infinity and it would never go up to 60B. Um, so let's just do that. Now, one value that, that works uh, well is essentially if we say the minimum value is minus 0 0.5, and the uh, maximum value is uh, 1.2. And that essentially makes sure because the uh, space controller is always going to uh, communicate uh, values from zero to one, that it never goes down to minus infinity, it's never going to be done, done mapped down to minus infinity and it never goes up to 60p. So let me just check that. So if I'm if I'm having one, if I'm, if I'm having it swiped up all the way, I'm now s slightly above zero. And if I'm going down, I'm at minus 2040p. So, so that's kind of a range that feels natural. So let's just see how that works. Um, so I now can... change the volume, I can change the frequency and the resonance. And that actually makes a lot of sense the way to have that combined. It feels very natural with my thumb here. So let me just set that here. Okay, but we can actually have multiple instances of that device because we have the possibility to address multiple objects uh, and uh, that will allow us to um, control multiple tracks. So let's put our attention to our second track with this, this instance of Dune. And in this particular case, what I would like to do is I would like to control Dune directly. Um, and in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second filter. Let me just... Let me just um, play that just by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the mod wheel because that's really nice in this particular preset. It opens up really nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add a second filter here and let's let's do, I don't know, let's do this one. Let's put up the resonance a little bit. And essentially the idea is that if I change the filter balance, I can I can sort of control two different filters simultaneously. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, point the. So what we are going to do is we are going to map the uh, the filter balance to one value. Uh, we are going to map the cutoff frequency of the second filter to one value, and we are going to map the uh, mod wheel to one value. And uh, you know, kind of once again, uh, this is just. Uh, uh, whatever makes sense to you and whatever is fun. But this is the way we're going to do that here. So let me just uh, um, configure the uh, plugin so that we can actually receive those three values. So we want the mod wheel value, we want the balance value, and we want the cutoff frequency. Okay. And then we are going to add the OSC input message again. And in this particular case, we are going to use the second object. So we have to put in ADM slash object slash two slash AED. And we're going to once again going to do that. Sorry, not ADM, AMD. Not A AMD, ADM. ADM object two. AED and the third one ADM object object 2 and AED and the argument numbers are the same so the elevation comes in at number 1 and the uh, distance at number 2 uh, we have minimum and maximum values Let's start out with the, with the regular values. So once again, the maximum value that the space control application can communicate is from minus 180 to 180 for the azimuth and from minus 90 to 90 for the elevation and uh, from 0 to 1 for the distance. And then we also need to set the, the, the um, minimum value of the azimuth to 100 and the maximum to 0 in order to turn that around. And I now need to map the parameters from the OSC input device to the individual parameters in Dune. And uh, you can do that in any way you want, really. It's, it's just kind of what feels natural to do and what, what, what makes the most sense. So uh, let's have a look. So what, what, what are we going to do? Um, um, maybe let's map the... What, the, what makes the most sense? Well, ma let's maybe map the 
cutoff frequency to the uh, azimuth, which is essentially left right. That I think that makes sense. So let's map the um, azimuth to the cutoff frequency, and then maybe the elevation to the filter balance. So if you are kind of moving up, we're having one filter. If you're moving down, we have the other filter. And uh, and then the the distance uh, to the mod wheel. I think that makes the most sense. And that essentially would allow us to control that now. So let's just uh, have a brief listen on how that sounds. Now, in order to address that now, what I need to do is I need to, on my space control application, I need to change the link number to link number two. And as soon as I have that link number two, it should communicate to the... And obviously it's not yet communicating because we forgot one thing. We need to set the port number to 7000. Sorry for that. So... Um, now, now we can actually do that. So let's let's go back. So let's play that again. And if you now click the but button, so sort of the so that's the filter balance, the mod wheel, and the cutoff frequency. Now we're probably going to make a couple of adjustments here, similarly to what we did with the uh, with the beat maker. Let me just stop that here. Uh, because obviously uh, elevation from minus 180 to plus 180 is a little bit too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that from minus 90 to 90. And uh, then I also find it rather uh, uncomfortable to go with the resonance from uh, from minus 90 to 90. Uh, so let's let's do the same thing that we did in the in the um, with Eden. So essentially we went from zero to 90 instead of from minus 90 to 90. It kind of feels unnatural to kind of uh, point down, but and we can leave the module alone. And let's see how that feels. So we have sort of the cutoff frequency for the filter. If, if, if I'm going to, to the second filter and I'm changing the cutoff frequency. So essentially you get the idea. Now the nice thing about this is that I now can actually control both instances simultaneously and I don't even need to, uh, I don't need to actually kind of be on that particular track. So let's just enable the, the, the beatmaker track here. So if I'm not changing the link number to link number two, I can essentially change these two things simultaneously without ever leaving or without ever kind of touching me of really. And this essentially allows us, and you could continue with that. Essentially, you can add additional objects, you can add additional um, kind of uh, OSC input devices, you can have multiple input devices on one track. You could se se separate them out. If you don't want to use the distance, you don't have to. You can just use elevation and azimuth. If you don't want to use elevation because that up and down is a little unnatural, just don't use it. So there are many, many different ways, and anything that you can tr control or anything that you can map the OSC input device on to in Ableton is something, is fair game. So that's everything you can use. And I think that's actually very nice, uh, a very nice application for Space Controller. When, when I purchased Space Controller, I was a little bit concerned about the, about the amount of money that I spent for it. But with all the different things that we can do for it, with, or can we do with it, is, it, it actually kind of is, is a very creative tool. So there are lots of possibilities. And uh, obviously this also works for any uh, digital audio workstation that can take in OSC messages. Uh, one, uh, for example, is Reaper. Reaper can do anything really so, so so you can you can have an osc device in in reaper and you can do the same thing in reaper you just have to do a little bit of programming there but it works actually quite well so this is really everything i wanted to say today thank you so much for watching this video if you found it valuable please don't forget to press the like button because once again youtube wants us to do that if you have any questions or comments please use the comment section below or join my discord community and invite link is in the description below and if there's anything you want to know more about how to use space controller in creative ways just let me know and i'm more than happy to maybe create another video who knows uh, but uh, for now i think that's everything i wanted to say about space controller and with that being said See you at the next video.